Hey, welcome to another tutorial from Photoshop is Fun. Now today what I want to talk about is sharpening your photographs and specifically how to get your images as close to being perfectly tacked sharp as possible. And while there's literally dozens of different techniques within Photoshop for adding detail and sharpening your images, I've come to the conclusion through my own work as well as swapping tricks of the trade with other professional digital artists that we all use about three different unique techniques depending upon the image we're working with. Now, in fact, just last week, I was working with a um, digital artist over at Microsoft Studios who's responsible for a lot of their online and print work, and he validated more or less that he uses these same techniques in his own workflow. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to cover one of those three detailing techniques. It's the one I personally use most in my own workflow, as well as what seems to be the favorite amongst my peers. So personally, my favorite type of photography to shoot is portrait photography. So for this first technique, we're going to demonstrate it using um, a portrait photograph of Bradley here. And you can see he's in the Western garb and he's got the bandana thing going on and the hat and the um, cigar with the smoke bellowing off. And he's just got a lot of swagger going on. So let's go ahead and take this photograph and move it over into Photoshop so we can start working with it. So the first thing we should talk about is what is sharpening. Now we all know that sharpening is making things more clear and more detailed and whatnot, but under the hood what's happening is Photoshop is running a lot of algorithms and a lot of geeky math is going on and specifically what it's doing is it's looking for edges within your photograph and it's looking for contrasts and that's how it identifies those edges and once it finds them what it'll do is it'll highlight those pixels or it'll darken those pixels depending on where they are in their hue spectrum and that's what gives an image its sharp look now if you shoot in raw file format you definitely want to sharpen all of your images because no sharpening is taking place on the output of those files. It's just pure image data. Um, if you shoot in JPEG then you should just know that your camera is already applying some level of sharpening. It's part of the output of a JPEG format and you can add to that if you feel it necessary but just know that it's already taking place at some level. Okay, so let's get started with the first technique. Now the first technique that we're going to cover is the unsharp mask technique. And the one thing that I do want to emphasize is that there's no universal set of sharpening settings that works for all pictures in all situations. And quite frankly, that's why I run long sometimes on these tutorials because I want you to understand the tools that you're working with and the technologies so that you know how to apply them to whatever the materials are or the situation is that you find yourself in. And um, you know, just to give you an example, a high resolution photo requires different settings than a low resolution photo. And there's other variables involved that we're going to cover as well, but it's important to understand that so that you're not using the same set of settings for all of your photographs if it doesn't make sense to do so. Now, all of that said, let's go ahead and go through the unsharp mask technique. Okay, so go up to the filter menu and scroll down to sharpen and then select unsharp mask. And what you'll get is a new dialog box with three different sliders that you'll use to fine tune your detail work. Now, the first slider is the amount slider, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the amount of detail to be applied to the image. So if I were to turn it way down, you'll see the detail starts to fade and it goes back to the original image. If I were to crank it way up, just the opposite. I get a lot of detail. And I shoot with a D700 for most of my portraits, so I know that uh, an amount of about 200% is generally what I want um, with that particular uh, resolution. Now, the radius slider is the one I really want you to pay attention to. The radius slider basically applies the amount of detail and the amount of sharpening X pixels away from contrasting edges. So you can see his chin hair and the bandana are contrasting edges with the background. So that's where the detail is going to be applied when Photoshop runs its algorithms. So as I start to slide the radius slider up, you'll see a halo effect start, and that's obviously bad. That's too much um, radius. You're too far out from your contrasting edge to get that natural look. So what you want to do is find the sweet spot right before that halo starts to take place. You can see that probably around 1.7, 1.5 is about where I want my, my radius to be set at, and that's just before that halo starts. So that's about perfect. Now this is where low resolution photos versus a high resolution photo have different settings. So it's important to understand how this um, particular slider works. 
Now, the next slider is the threshold slider. And the threshold slider basically determines how much contrast there needs to be between colors for them to be sharpened. A higher threshold means higher contrast areas in your image will be sharpened, but low contrast areas won't be. Now, sharpening low contrast areas like a model smooth skin makes them look rough and more speckly. Settings that um, setting the threshold too low will give you a grainy look on low contrast areas, and that'll make um, noise in your image stand out more. So for this particular image, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and stick with a threshold of five because I think that works perfectly. And now I'm going to click OK. Okay, so let me zoom in and do a control Z to show you the before and after. So here's the before and here's the after. And as you can see, the detail is really nice. It applied it very beautifully. It's not too much, etc. Now, if I wanted to use targeted sharpening, what I would do is I would basically mask this layer. And I have another tutorial on how to do that if you're not familiar with it. And then I would just paint those areas where I wanted the detail to show up and show through. So maybe the eyes or the whiskers or parts of the hat are the areas that I'd really want to stand out with detail and not other areas. Um, so keep that in mind too that you know there's a universal way of sharpening an entire image as well as a targeted way of doing it. And that in a nutshell is the unsharp mask technique.